Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us today in this beautiful Shabbat day. And <clears throat> today is um, uh, particular Shabbat, uh, particular parasha. It's parasha Miketz, and it's a Shabbat Hanukkah. Okay, it's a Hanukkah Shabbat. And uh, there's no particular title for this one. It's just simply parasha Miketz and Shabbat Hanukkah. So, <clears throat> Miketz means at the end because we're coming to the end of the book of Genesis. <clears throat> and um, and then we also have the uh, Haftarah, or the prophetic portion. It comes from uh, three different, uh, actually four different sections. First Kings chapter 3, verses 15 through uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Then we have First Kings chapter 7, verses 40 through 50. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, and Zechariah chapter 2, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 7. There's quite a bit of reading just for the prophetic portion. Also for the Torah portion, I forgot to say, we're reading from Genesis 41, verse 1 through the end of the book, 44, 17. <clears throat> and then for the Maftir, which is the Hanukkah section of this week's portion, we read from Numbers chapter 7, verses 1 through chapter 8, verse 4. And then there's the Brit Hadashah, which is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Also, chapter 10, verses 22 to 39. Luke chapter 4, verses 14, or verses 16 through 30. <clears throat> Acts chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. So there's quite a bit of reading today, but it's so fun to read every day, uh, every weekend all these portions and all these sections because it's beautiful to see how they tie together. So before we start, <clears throat> my name is Rabbi Harald Clint Fry here in Perugia, Italy at the moment. And I um, just want to welcome you. Thank you. you I want to thank you, all of you uh, out there who are watching on our YouTube channel and also SoundCloud. I really thank you for those of you who are following us and have subscribed. We really appreciate you, and we want to say we love you in Yeshua, and we hope that these our teachings are a blessing to you just as much as they are to me, because every time I, uh, every year that I do a Torah portion, I always learn something new, and it's really great, because I don't think you can ever stop learning from the Word of God, right, from the Word of Hashem. So before we start, we shall just open this time in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this time to be in your presence through your word. And I want to thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that it is to <clears throat> read of your word and to study and just be in your presence. And the only way we can be in your presence is through the blood of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Savior. So thank you for this time. I ask you to bless it. And that which comes out of my mouth will be only from you, from your Holy Spirit, and not for my flesh. In Yeshua's name, Amen. So, uh, before we start, can you just grab a, a little drink of water? Yes, now and then I still have occasional problems with my throat. So it starts out with Genesis 41.1. <clears throat> and it came to pass at the end, or Miketz, two full years, that Pharaoh dreamed a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. So in last week's study, Joseph's brothers became jealous of Joseph, right? Plotted against him because his father uh, <clears throat> favored him above his other sons. And um, actually, that was two weeks ago. And then his prophetic dreams revealed his own destiny, which is a very great destiny. Throw him into the pit, sell him into slavery. While serving honorably as a slave, Joseph set up and sent to prison for a crime he didn't commit by uh, the wife of Potiphar. And in this week's reading, Joseph is finally about to come to an end of his many trials and enter into his destiny. Okay, so in fact, the name of the parasha, which I said, Miketz, the opening verse of this week's Torah reading, hints at this, since this Hebrew word means at the end of. <clears throat> so Joseph is brought out of the darkness of an Egyptian dungeon to interpret the strange dreams of the pharaoh and i'm sorry i did say that it was the end of the book of genesis no i'm not i, I was uh, having a different thought so i apologize for that and 
so he's brought out of the darkness of the dungeon after 10, actually I just discovered it was 12 years, 10 years plus two years uh, after that, uh, that he had uh, prophesied on those two other prisoners that were brought into jail, uh, the cup bearer and the bread maker, <clears throat> one of whom was restored back to his, um, his job, the cup bearer, and the other one was Hong, who was the bread maker. Now, in just one day, Joseph is promoted from prison to being second in command in all of Egypt, in the palace. His life is transformed suddenly from darkness to light. And it's incredible if you think about it, how quickly things changed for him. So yeah, he went through 12 years in a dungeon, 12 years in the prison. But in the end, he, he was released and raised up into second command after the Pharaoh. That's incredible. So put aside Potiphar's household and serving there, he gets, look what he gets to do after all this suffering. So what does it mean to be a light in the darkness? So because Miketz also coincides with Hanukkah, also called the Festival of Lights or the, the Feast of Dedication, because this is when the temple would be dedicated or would be sanctified okay so this week's reading has a special haftarah which i said is a prophetic reading about the prophet zachariah's vision of a huge or grand menorah and he says he asked me what do you see i answered i see a gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it <clears throat> with seven channels to the lamps also there are two olive trees by it one on the right of the bowl and the other one on its left this is in Zechariah chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. So there are two olive trees that feed the menorah with oil. <clears throat> and the trees are often considered to refer to Joshua the high priest and Zerubbabel, which are both religious and political figures. However, since prophecy usually represents present and future, and trees in scripture often represent people, the trees are seen by some to represent Jewish believers and Gentile believers, sons of oil who give light in the darkness. <clears throat> Some can mean that maybe it means the two witnesses that come in the, in the book of Revelation chapter 11. So others think that the two trees represent the anointing of the Messiah and the Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit. The Zechariah promises that the righteous branch will come and deal with the sin that separates us from God in a single day. So think about it. Yeshua himself also did something miraculous in one day. Right? He separated us. Uh, he dealt with the sin that separates us from our father in one day. And it says in Zechariah chapter 3, verses 8 through 9, I'm going to bring my servant, the branch, and I'll remove the sin of this land in a single day. So the connection to the Ruach seems to be supported in verse 6 of chapter 4. Uh, the Ruach is the spirit. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah 4, 6. So in the holy sanctuary, the light of the menorah became a symbol of Hashem's divine presence. Okay, its light shined not only inside the temple, but tradition says it also shined out the windows and into Jerusalem where people could see its light, its rays during the dark nights. I don't know, I wasn't there, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so during this time of the year, when the winter nights are the longest, we sense our need for light more intensely, right? <clears throat> Think about it. I don't like really winter time very much. I don't like the darkness coming early. Um, I don't know, it can be kind of cozy, but I don't really care for it. I like the summertime. I like the spring when we have long days. I love the light. So when we're going through our long, dark night of the soul, many of us do many times during our lives, not just one or once or twice, we feel more intensely our desire to see just a small amount, a glimmer of light, right? <clears throat> So the Hebrew prophet Isaiah wrote of a great light that would one day come to lift people out of the gloomy darkness. Nevertheless, in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. So who is this great light of which Isaiah is talking about <clears throat> that he prophesied? The light would come in a form of a child 
who would eventually rule the nations in righteousness and justice, seated on the throne of his father, David, for all of eternity. Obviously, he's not going to come back as a little baby boy. He's going to come back as a king, as a lion. Okay, and his feet will stand on a Mount of Olives, literally, not figuratively, like some people like to say. The Mount of Olives will split in two. Why is this? Why is it, uh, do you think that this will happen? Well, if we read later on in the year, we're going to read about the red heifer, huh? the para adumwa, which is <clears throat> the red heifer, which was taken outside of the city onto the Mount of Olives to a specific place at that time where it was sacrificed <clears throat> and it was dealt with and the ashes were, were, were used to purify the temple. Yeshua himself will come back at the end of the seven years of tribulation and the, and the reign of the Antichrist, where the Antichrist will defile the temple. Yeshua will come back. His feet will land on the Mount of Olives, and he will the Mount of Olives will split in two because he's going to be the ultimate and last sacrifice needed to sanctify and purify the temple, where he will reign from for a thousand years. All right, then once that new heavens and new earth is created. The new Jerusalem comes down, there will be no temple because there will be no need for it because Yeshua himself will be <clears throat> the light and will be the temple for all of eternity. But for that time, it will be necessary to, to purify the temple because that's where he's going to reign from. Okay, it's not up for question. It's what is real and what's going to happen. It's written in the Bible. He will reign for a thousand years from there. So it says in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, for us Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty, God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. So it says in John 8, 12, Yeshua HaMashiach, Messiah, the anointed one, said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's beautiful. So <clears throat> it's not going to be a human being. Okay. I'm sorry, but no world leader, no person who comes and says, I am the Messiah can be him because it says he will come back on the clouds. He will not come back as a person physical being until he lands his feet on the Mount of Olives and it splits in two. Then he'll be here as a person, but then he will come on the clouds. He will not come as a political leader or anything else. Okay. I myself am from the tribe of Judah and I am a direct descendant of King David. I am not going to sit here and say, Hey, I'm the Messiah because I come from King David. No, it's impossible for anybody to claim that. And if you hear anybody claiming it, and we will hear it often in these last days, more and more, better run. You run from those people, okay? That's not to be questioned. It's to be followed. The Bible says this. In the last days, there will be many false prophets and many who come saying they are the Messiah. No, no, no. So let's talk about the light of the world. And what Hanukkah is, Hanukkah is a celebration of light. It's a joyous festival that commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people from the oppression of the Greeks who ruled the Jewish people from 332 to 164 BC. If you look behind me, I have a nice, beautiful, little, <laughs> simple <laughs> menorah that has the nine <clears throat> branches. And it's only used for this eight days. <clears throat> Otherwise, normally we have the seven one, the one with the seven branches. So it's both a physical salvation and a spiritual one. Since the Jews were not only rescued from persecution, but also liberated from an enforced Hellenistic or Greek religious system and culture. And trust me, people, this is coming quickly again, worldwide. <clears throat> Hellenistic or we could say um, evil satanic <clears throat> one world global government, one world global religious system, which is being set up by the Pope right now, and <clears throat> other many things. So they fought for their freedom to worship the one true God and keep his commandments as was written in the Torah. 
these days are going to come again, and those who are really truly believers will need to fight for their right to worship the one true God, even whether it's like in many countries where it happens even now in China, North Korea, and other, you know, how it used to be in Russia and other places where they had to meet in private, in secret. <clears throat> so, okay. So many will be arrested and put to death. And that's what's written in the book of Revelation. It didn't say there's going to be a rapture and we're all going to be all saved from whatever's coming. No, that will come later before the seven bowls of wrath, after the seven shofars or trumpets. Okay. Nothing will happen until then and many will die this is what it says in the word of Hashem so <clears throat> I'm going off track a lot but then I, I really feel the need to say these things because many people don't even realize what's going on people are saying well things will get better let's keep hoping for the best it'll go back to normal just keep getting your your vaccine whatever no it's gonna get worse people it's gonna do exactly what the word of Hashem says in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel, and many others. <clears throat> so, the question often comes is, did Yeshua celebrate Hanukkah? There's only one reference in scripture to Hanukkah, which is found in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. It indicates that he more than likely kept the festival. All right, he did go. The Gospel of John reveals that Yeshua walked in the courts of the temple during Hanukkah, or at the Feast of Dedication. <clears throat> now it was a feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter and Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch there you go John 10 22 through 23 and he did go in and read from the Torah he also declared that he is the light of the world so while he was there there were people who asked him directly if he was the Messiah Yeshua pointed to the works he had done as proof but explained that they did not believe in him because they were not his sheep so in this week's Suggestion, suggested Brit Hadashah portion, Yeshua the Messiah proclaimed his mission as one of healing the brokenhearted and setting the captives free. The verses he cited came directly out of the book of the Hebrew prophet Isaiah. It says in Isaiah, or Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19, <clears throat> so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is also found in Isaiah 61.1. <clears throat> All right, he wasn't just coming up with something new. This was already written, and he was just simply quoting what Isaiah had written. So now I'd like to talk about Yeshua and Yosef. That is in English, Jesus and Joseph. So there are, like I said, many parallels, like I even mentioned last week, that can be drawn between Yeshua and Joseph. At the time of Joseph's, Joseph's release from prison, he was 30 years old, just as Yeshua was 30 when he began his ministry. Also, Joseph had been so changed during his time in Egypt that his brothers no longer recognized him. <clears throat> All right, they stood right in front of him, seeking the salvation from their family that he could only provide, and yet they had no idea he was a brother. Imagine. <laughs> so likewise, Yeshua's Jewish brothers and sisters are unable to recognize him as their Jewish Messiah, often because they do not read or understand also the Messianic prophecies. They refuse to read the book of Daniel. Obviously, they don't read the book of Revelation either. So how are they supposed to know? The only way they can see is if the veil is lifted from their eyes, like there are many Messianic Jews these days. And it's only because Yeshua is allowing them to see the truth and he's lifting the veil one by one, two by two or whatever. So another reason also for this is the way Yeshua has been portrayed by Christians over the centuries. <clears throat> he seems to be have ceased from being the observant Jew who faithfully kept the commandments of Hashem in the Torah and has instead been labeled as the Gentiles' God. Okay, very, very evil, but I, that's what was supposed to happen. Yeshua's identity had been so changed that the great majority of Jewish people can't even fathom that this Jesus could possibly be the Jewish Messiah, Mashiach, 
for whom they've been waiting, longing, and praying for over 3,000 years. And even if you use his Jewish name, Yeshua, many of them will just argue and fight and get very angry, saying that's impossible. He's cursed because he was hung on a tree. So, like I said, unless the veil is lifted, they cannot see. However, nevertheless, prophet Zechariah told us that one day all Jewish people will recognize him, all those who are left alive at the end of seven years. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. This is Zechariah 12.10. <clears throat> so today, there are thousands of Yeshua's brothers and sisters are coming to understand who he truly is. It is happening. They are often called, like us, Messianic Jews, and the search for the Messiah of the scriptures has come to an end. These are what many refer to as completed Jews, and they're steadily gaining recognition as a legitimate sect of Judaism in Israel and in the world. Slowly but surely, it's a fight, <clears throat> but it's happening. Another important parallel is that Joseph's father, Israel, or Jacob, had exalted Joseph. And the Shem has exalted Yeshua. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, When he appeared as a human being, he humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even to death, death on a stake as a criminal. <clears throat> Therefore, God raised him to the highest place and gave him the name above every name. So above, although Joseph's brothers had hated him and vowed that they would never bow down to him, as his dreams said they would, <clears throat> Genesis 37, 19 through 20, we see in this parasha that in the end, or miketz, they do come and bow down to their brother Joseph, just like he dreamed. Hey, if you're going to have a prophetic dream, guess what? Nothing or nobody's going to stop it, okay? No matter what they say. So this is a prophetic picture of the day when all of Israel will recognize also Yeshua's authority. Every knee will bow to him and know that he is Adonai, the Lord. So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, it says that in honor of the name given Yeshua, Every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That's what that means, even people that are in Hades and hell. And every tongue will acknowledge that Yeshua is the Messiah, is Adonai, to the glory of God the Father. This is also found in Isaiah 45, 23. <clears throat> so, if you'd like to accept Yeshua as your Messiah now, if you are a Jew, <clears throat> I really strongly invite you to just search in your heart even if you want to negate what's written in the Brit Kharasha, in the New Covenant, it still says it in the Old Covenant, in the Tanakh, and in the, in the books of the prophets. If you go to read Daniel, the book of Daniel, which many refuse to read, it's there. But if you read Isaiah 53, which also many will not read, it talks about this. And we have a book that we can give to you. If you want, we can get it sent to you. Just contact us on the contact link below in the description of the video or on SoundCloud. And you can uh, just contact us with your name, uh, your address, and your email. <clears throat> and we will gladly make sure you get a copy of a book that explains how this is possible. If you'd like to accept Yeshua as your Savior, as your Moshiach today, I invite you just to say this prayer with me. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melech Haolam. Asher Natan Nanu Eterech HaYeshua B'Mishiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the way of salvation and Messiah Yeshua. If you have any questions, please send them. We're here to answer. We're here for you. There's a, like I said, you can make it, leave a comment, but if you have a, a deeper question, I, I invite you to just uh, contact through the contact link and that will be more private obviously <clears throat> we also have a link for those of you who need help who need counseling in any way for past or present things you're going through or have gone through called Mahase Shil Tikva offered by Rebbe Tzin Gavriela my wife who is a licensed counselor and be would be uh, glad to help you in any way if you'd like to dedicate 
a parasha or Torah portion in the future. There's also a link at the very, very bottom of the page or in the description where you can click on that and ask to dedicate a Torah portion parasha to somebody special or an event even. We would love to do that for you. If you need prayer, contact us. If you feel blessed and you would like to donate, <clears throat> there is a donation link also. If not, may you be blessed in the name of Yeshua. Yevarechecha Adonai Beishmerecha Yael Adonai Pana Velecha Bikuneka Yisadonai Pana Velecha Besehem Lecha Besehem Lecha Shalom Beshem Yeshua Hamashiach Sarha Shalom Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. I hope you've enjoyed this sermon and I hope it is a blessing to you. And I, I want to invite you to read all the, of, the, um, <clears throat> of the scriptures that we told you because it's just a beautiful way to spend the day. Shabbat Shalom to all of you.